Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Laura Keim. I'm Stenton's curator, and I am here this afternoon at the Philadelphia Antique Show with Kelly Kinzel in his very green booth full of wonderful treasures for sale. And we're here because we're having a kind of a celebration, a little reunion, if a you will. A show and tell. A show and, and tell yeah. for, um, for stools, these really stunning stools. Um, and Stanton has a pair, like the, um, the one you see here with the check fabric that's been in the collection at Stanton since 1915 by bequest of a Logan descendant named Samuel Benton. And Kelly's stool quite recently came out of the woodwork. Um, yes. And before I have Kelly tell the full story of his acquisition, I'm just gonna, for those who, who might be tuning in through the show and may not know Stenton quite as well, I'm just gonna spend a moment um, just inviting you to see a little bit about what our historic site is like so that if you can't visit this weekend, on another visit to Philadelphia, you can come out. And here is um, the 1723 to 30 built house in the early Georgian style. And it's near Germantown. So it's only about four and a half miles from the Philadelphia Museum of Art, where we are, where the star is. And I'm gonna talk about two families today. The Logan family that lived at Stenton, as well as the Norris family. Um, and this was the Norris country seat built in the early 18th century. But we're gonna talk about the son of that builder, Charles Norris, who had a townhouse in Philadelphia for which all of these stools were made. So we'll get to that story. And Stenton now is just two and a half acres of the sort of pie-shaped property administered by the National Society of the Colonial Dames in Pennsylvania inside about an eight acre city park and what was once a 511 acre plantation plus a later generation um, addition. So this was a, a rural place and it's now in the middle of post-industrial Philadelphia, but full of um, wonderful, mostly family um, 18th and early 19th century furniture that we would be delighted to share with you um, on a visit. And we are also um, doing much work to interpret slavery at Stenton too. The Logans were Quakers, as were the Norrises, and so sometimes this is a surprising um, reality, but very much part of 18th century life at Stenton as well. And I'll come back to this um, family tree in a few moments, but let's go back to Kelly and hear about the, this stool, this yes. stool coming out of the woodwork. And this is so exciting for me, I just have to say, as a curator, because our collecting is driven by provenance, by things yes. that have come down in the family. And I know that there are still things out there that family members still own, but have gone into other collections. And so every time something surfaces, it's just super exciting. Whether we get to actually have it at Stenton or not, it's just so important for us yes. to know. It is fun too, and it's fun for me because you don't know, you hope for these discoveries, but you and you need to anticipate for them but 90 percent of the time that doesn't happen 99 percent of the time this is just such a unique experience even for me to have lucked into these things but this was advertised at a local sale and i went and i looked and i was convinced that it was right so I set up a phone line for it. And just like any time you set up a mobile communication, there can be problems. And that's what happened to me. I, the call dropped and I lost the piece at the auction. I never even got to put a bid in on it. So the auctioneer was kind enough to let the person that bought it know that I was interested. And it's a dealer I know, Stephen Stiltz. And the story got a little bit more complicated when he contacted you before he contacted me because he discovered what he had and knew that it was a great American treasure. And so he did the research and he contacted you and then you and he got together and compared the stools and, and you found the, the number, right? Yes. Yeah, you found the number one on this stool, Yeah. on my stool, and yours were numbered two and three. That's right. 
So he did the research and I was able to purchase it from him at that point. And at then, an elevated at a price far, point. Yes, yes, <laughs> at, a, at an elevated price point, but one that I thought was worthy of, of the know, object. Yeah. So I was able to buy it through that. Well, and, maybe we should take a moment now, actually right in front of this, where we have those two stools here, just to show everybody those numbers and those details yes, that were yeah. part of the discovery. Now on, on yours, and they are in the, let me, yeah, right here, yours number two, two, just two chisel marks, and you might, it might be ambiguous to some people, but then when you look at the two marks here. It starts to make sense. Yeah. and then when... You got to Steve's, I believe. Yes. I understand. You discovered that this mark, recognizing what the number two looked like, this was not a chisel mark, but an actual number. And this yeah. had webbing over it that was yeah. placed in such a way that you had to peel back to even find the number yeah. one. And it's not, you can certainly see the number one on the but seat frame. But it's not easy. But it's yeah. not easy unless you really know what you're looking for and the fact that it's a single line I think yeah. can uh, make you doubt, is it a one or is it a line? <laughs> a one or is it a line? So it was really our ability to bring this stool along yeah. that made this discovery really possible. And, and the fact that these have a little bit unique construction with there's a three-piece glue block where most Philadelphia furniture has a one-piece glue block here and then one here where they stopped it and they put in a triangular piece. And it's fairly unique to, uh, you know, I wasn't really familiar with no. finding it often. No. And so this is the same case. It has this three piece glue block. And the way the tops of the legs are chiseled, which is a little, if you look at other furniture, you don't see it that often. So it's amazingly how just, you know, this is one of the set. Yes. And then you discovered, or because the information I got was th this this came out of England. That's right. And That's right. Was was part of the the Logan family when they went to England in the was it the 19th century? The later 19th century. So I'll grab I'll actually grab my iPad again. You can stay here. I'll bring it down, and um, we can just look at the family tree. So, and actually, Rachel, I think I'll, I'll flip the, our stool up a little bit so you can capture uh, the, the, these initials here. And those initials are ACL, and that is for um, Albanus, or Albanus, I've never been quite sure how to pronounce his name, Charles Logan. And he's right in the middle of that tree. So Charles Norris, his um, grandfather, commissioned the stools for his Philadelphia townhouse, and they came presumably to Stenton when um, Charles's daughter, Deborah Norris, married George Logan of Stenton. And this red outlined people are those who actually inherited Stenton. But the way the stools seem to have come down is the Stenton stools went to Sarah Elizabeth Logan, married to Thomas Forrest Betton, and their son, Samuel Logan Betton, who died in 1915, left them to Stenton by bequest. And we'll also show you pictures of, there are, is another set of four stools, identical to these, but with pad feet rather than the claw feet, that Charles Norris also commissioned. And at least two of them came down through this line to Robert Restelrig Logan, um, who died in 1956. And it seems that um, Joe Kendig had purchased those um, from Robert Restelrig Logan and sold them to Henry Francis DuPont. And so here on the, um, on the iPad, you're seeing Albanus Charles and his wife, Mariah Dickinson, and some of their children by Auguste Edouard in 1843. So he's, he's again our um, subscriber. And they, in addition to owning Stenton, they lived 
Um, their generation lived in this house, Somerville, nearby. So the stools could have been there. And here's the Charles Norris mansion down on Chestnut Street. You can see that it had a garden side with the trees and a service side with fewer windows, a piazza or porch, and a service store. And it's quite likely that these would have been some of their, their elite furnishings. Yeah. And um, in the Blue Book of Philadelphia Furniture, um, Horner looks, is clearly looking back at a combination of inventories and purchases and notes that John Elliott supplied um, six side chairs with shell at the top front and knee and corresponding stools covered with damask to match four window curtains. And so it may be on the garden side of the house that there were the best rooms had four windows, two facing the street and two facing the garden. And you can imagine these stools perhaps sitting yeah, in those in windows window. and matching the window curtains. And so here are, are the stools we have with us today, the claw stools. And then these are with the winter pad stools in the Marlborough room. And it's unclear to me for certain. Um, Horner says that there were both silk damask in the dining room and worsted damask in the front parlor. And the silk damask in the dining room kind of, um, I find hard to grasp because you're um, having silk with your food, which yeah. seems unlikely, but that may in fact be um, just what the Norrises did. And there's documentation. Um, these are from, this is from the Kindig Antique Papers of um, the purchase of stools from Robert Restelrig Logan. And then these are the lists in the Winter registrar's, registrar's Office showing all the things that were purchased um, from Kindig Antiques. And we I just was able to find um, a pair of Philadelphia Queen Anne stools. And they, they really didn't know what all of these were. At one point, they're calling them out as um, 1760 pair of Philadelphia Queen Anne stools, which belonged to James Logan of Stenton circa 1730. So these are 1934 and 39, and I suspect that the 39 is Robert Restelrig Logan and that family provenance. Um, and you can see here too, this is the inside of one of the, the Winterture stools. Mm -hmm. This is a replaced glue block, but they have that, um, in fact, it's harder to see whether it is in fact identical yeah they look they look like they have the two piece they do oh, yeah, they do sorry. oh well, that's all right yeah yeah they have one here and then one large they square. are different yeah so it, the pad ones may not be made exactly as the claw foot ones um and this is just when you do come to visit stenton at some point our stools currently live in the blue lodging room which was um deborah norris logan's bed chamber so this has just been incredibly exciting because also number four is it's still, still there. I know, yes, still I there. thought of that, and it's, it's probably in England. It may it, very well be yeah. in England. Another one of Jane Caroline Armat Logan Luxmore, yeah. one of her descendants, um, may have the other yeah. one. Yeah. Well, time to do some research. Time to do yeah. some research. Maybe do some. Uh, some articling door and door knocking as <laughs> yeah. well yeah so kelly Good. i'm just so grateful that no. you allowed Thank us to you. come today no. and happy and to celebrate happy to all this news out. you know this is this is what i do so i'm happy to move it along and yeah find a happy home so all right Good. well thank you thank you bye everyone